Here are the 15 best Raspberry Pi kits and accessories for emulation. I'd also like to go over some retro game recommendations at the end of the video, which you may not be aware of and will have fun playing. The links to buy everything that I go over will of course be linked down in the description below, like always. So first is the Labis starter kit that comes with a 64GB micro SD card, a really cool looking case, two micro HDMI cords, a heat sink that has two RGB fans, a screwdriver, a power supply, and an SD card holder. And actually, before we move any further into the video, all of these offer the following. There's two micro HDMI ports, a USB-C port, a DSi display connector, it has a 40 pin GPIO header, four USB inputs, two normal USB, and then two USB 3.0, an audio port, a gigabit ethernet port, they have Wi-Fi, the quad-core Cortex A72 CPU, have Bluetooth, all are eight gigabyte, have a 64-bit operating system, and a CSI camera connector. The Raspberry Pi 4 Plus offers all of that stuff, and that is what this video is about, so I just don't think that you wanna hear me repeat that 10 times throughout the video. And because this is a kit, quote unquote, video of course they all have a power supply and hdmi cords and stuff like that anyways back to the labis starter kit there are two fans that come with this case to keep it cool and of course the heat sink this is going to cost you 140 dollars and because we just mentioned basically every feature with the raspberry pi 4 the rest of this video is going to be pretty quick next up is a 120 gigabyte can of kit that comes with a case designed for cooling and has five stars with over a thousand reviews. This one is going to cost you $150, but you can save $8 right now with a coupon. Next is another one from Canakit that comes with a 64 gigabyte SD card and has a white case. It's the exact same thing as the last one we just barely went over. It just has a different SD card and a different color case. This one is going to cost you $140. Next is another Canakit version, but it has a mouse and keyboard. This one's only 32 gigabytes, but if you have some SD cards laying around, which I'm sure that you do, this is going to cost you $150. The fifth one on the list is a Super Nintendo version that comes with two Super Nintendo controllers, a 32 gigabyte SD card that's preloaded with stuff for you. I don't wanna say what that is because I don't want the listing to be removed from Amazon. <laughs> Anyways, it has an eight gigabyte USB flash drive as well, and this one is surprisingly only $135. Next is the Labist 128 gigabyte kit. This has an SD card that comes with everything you need to begin having fun when you get it again. This one is going to require an HDMI cord. It does not actually come with one, but this is going to cost you $150. So now let's go over some accessories. First are some controllers by 8-Bit Do. I could not find the original Super Nintendo controller that they make that I own personally. This is the one that I own and I absolutely love this thing. It works incredible. But anyways, I could only find the ones with like joysticks on them, which honestly, most of you are probably going to prefer in 2021 anyways. I got a wired version and then a wireless version. One's a Super Nintendo themed controller and then the other ones are Nintendo Switch and Wii U. Pro controller designs. So the next thing is a retro flag Super Pi case that's themed off of the Super Nintendo that comes with heat sinks, a fan, two controllers, and of course, the SNES case. Next is another retro flag case themed off of the original Nintendo and has a game cartridge that actually is an SSD, which is a pretty awesome thing to have with the Raspberry Pi. That is going to seriously increase the loading speeds of everything. Next are some unbranded Super Nintendo controllers that have some really good reviews. I just thought that I would throw these in the video since people are having a very good experience with them and they are really, really cheap at only $25 for two controllers with the Bluetooth adapters. Okay, now for some game recommendations. Congo's Caper on the Super Nintendo was one of my favorites growing up and not many people are aware of this game. It's just a platformer, but it is extremely fun. Batman and Robin from the Sega Genesis 
specifically because the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis versions were completely different. They're both very fun, but the Sega game is like hard as hell, and it's like an arcade beat em up action game. If you want a challenge, then definitely try this one out. If you want a more relaxing but still difficult challenge, then definitely try the Super Nintendo version out. I mean, obviously, we all know about Zelda, Super Mario World, Metroid, Contra, Castlevania, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. So I'm not going to go over those because you're bound to play those if you get a Raspberry Pi. You know what I mean? But anyways, Boogerman from the Super Nintendo is also a pretty cool, fun game. It's just a very simple platformer, but it, it's definitely going to be one of those games that make you laugh as you play through it. And then Inspector Gadget from the Super Nintendo was also very fun. This is like one of those like, wow, like they made a game off of the show that's actually good. Like it's actually really, really fun. It, it's a really cool game. And then the last game that I wanted to mention is Goof Troop. I'm sure that a lot of you know about this one, but it's a really cool puzzler that I think a lot of you would have fun with. Definitely if you have kids and want to show them some of the games that you ended up growing up with, this is a perfect game to play with kids. But yeah, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to leave a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!